All right. Well, welcome everyone uh, to our last brown bag of the year. Thank you for joining us. My name is Jennifer Buhait. I'm the education coordinator at Old Woman Creek. I'm going to ask um, a couple people on the screen to just say their name and um, what they what they do at Old Woman Creek. They're kind of helping us in the background here and then we'll introduce our speaker. So Emily, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, my name is Emily Kuzmik and I'm the Coastal Training Program Coordinator at Oldham and Creek. All right, Morgan. Hi, my name is Morgan Bopel. I'm one of the natural resources technician here at Oldham and Creek. All right, so thank you. Um, we've had a great season. We've had to pivot as everybody has this year uh, with uh, moving our brown bags to being a virtual format. Uh, we've had a lot of requests over the years to do this, so we've finally been able to, to get them recorded and um, they will be posted on the Ohio Department of Natural Resources YouTube page, Olderman Creek has a playlist. So um, the last couple of brown bags we've done and a couple of webinars we've we've done um, are all listed up there and you can check back throughout um, the winter for some new content that might be coming as well. Um, but the topic of today is uh, wetlands as you know, it usually is for us at Oldman Creek. And um, Janice Kearns, our manager, is gonna be talking about the H2 Ohio program, which is focused on um, wetlands and how they uh, positively impact water quality. She is the monitoring program lead and she's gonna give us some updates on this really neat program. So Janice, I'm gonna ask you to share your screen. Okay, hopefully I have the right screen showing for you now. Let me just adjust a few things over here so I can make sure I'm seeing everything right. Oh, excellent. All right, so you can see my uh, lead page there, Jen? I can. I'm, I wanna make sure, hold on, I'm gonna try one more thing. So that we can see. Yes, so we can see your smiling face and your slides now. Excellent. Wait. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, we're all still learning, and especially me. This is my first uh, virtual presentation, so bear with me as well. But yes, as Jen said, uh, my name is Janice Kearns. I'm the reserve manager here at Old Woman Creek. I've also am the lead ODNR person for the wetland restoration program uh, related to H2 Ohio. So I want to thank you all for being here. I really appreciate um, probably the wide variety of individuals who are, are listening today. Typically our Brown Bag Lunch Series, um, our audience is typically community members who live in our area and able to physically meet at our location. Uh, but now in this virtual world, we have the benefit of being able to come in contact with people um, no matter where they are in the world. So I expect that there's probably a diversity of background and interest. So today I'll be going over a high level overview of the H2 Ohio initiative and the development of the rest restoration monitoring plan. Uh, the outline will be to give you some brief background information about the goals and how we are implementing uh, H2 Ohio projects. Also talk a little bit about wet wetlands nutrient removal processes and knowledge gaps around that that we still currently have. I'll then move into the wetland monitoring program components, discussing about the guiding principles, protocol and development, and the adaptive framework we'll use to update the plan as we move forward. I'll also then end briefly with some uh, discussion about the monitoring program being a research platform where we can leverage the information that we're gaining from the long-term monitoring program to gain greater insights that can be used to make management decisions. And then as all Old Woman Creek projects, uh, we always take that research information and then transition or translate that information into an educational outreach format. And so I'll talk a little bit about our ideas in that department. So many of you will probably recognize the picture. Uh, this picture is the 2011 uh, harmful algal blooms experienced on Lake Erie. 
and the associated bloom severity forecast that has been since developed. You can see here uh, the graph indicates how harmful algal blooms began to increase starting in early 2000s and that the lake has experienced some comparatively high levels ever since. To combat, these, to combat this situation, Governor Mike DeWine has initiated the H2 Ohio program in July of 2019 to ensure safe and clean water. This program was created through an unprecedented collaboration using strategies that are long-term, sustainable, cost-effective, and permanent. The plan is an investment uh, targeted at solutions to reduce frost risk runoff and prevent algal blooms through increased implementation of agricultural best practices, the creation of wetlands, and an improvement on wastewater infrastructure. Since its inception, H2I How experts have relied on strong collaboration with its partners. The plan was developed with input from a broad co coalition of agricultural education and research partners. H2 Ohio is being led by the Ohio Department of Agriculture, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Ohio Protection Agent, Environmental Protection Agency, and the Lake Erie Commission. For the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, a role of this initiative has been focused to take up <clears throat> focusing on creating, restoring, and enhancing wetlands around Ohio, with an initial focus on Lake Erie and the Western Basin. So many of you here today have had the opportunity to listen in to press presentations um, about work conducted at Old Woman Creek will likely recognize this image and be familiar with important wetland ecosystem functions. But for those of you who may be just joining us now that we are in this virtual world, this simplified picture illustrates the importance of features of how wetlands work like natural kidneys because of their ability to filter out impurities and natural um, and nutrients from the water like phosphorus and sediment. For instance, as phosphorus moves into wetland it is taken up into short-term storage through plants, algae, and soil absorption. And then long-term storage through the buildup of sediment and barrel of phosphorus. So all of that information or the basis of that information was used to develop 26 projects for the initial phase of the H2 Ohio ODNR wetland restoration projects. Um, as I said, most of those have occurred currently in the Western Basin, but we do have a handful that are um, scattered throughout all of the state of Ohio in the hopes that future phases will expand the network of these wetland restoration projects. Our coastal efforts uh, for these programs includes uh, focusing on creating, restoring, and reconnecting wetland systems throughout various approaches, including nature-based shorelines, in-water in flow uh, wetlands, reconnecting diked systems, and other opportunities. We have focused on the Maumee and Sandusky River watersheds, including both Maumee Bay and the Sandusky Bay region. Inland Western Lake Erie Basin projects will focus on efforts turning washes with highest concentrations of nutrient loading in areas viewed to be opportunistic for wetland success. Wetlands include some of the approaches I mentioned previously in the coastal areas, but also include the use of treatment wetland trains, new wetland creations, cascading waterways, and stream and forested buffers. The first completed project within this area includes the development of an existing wetland at the Earth Outdoor Center within Sandusky Bay Watershed at the headwaters of the Wolf Creek. Work includes excavation of grass field, allowing it to revert to its former wet woods ecosystem. The project also called for breaking drainage tiles to restore natural hydrology to surrounding areas, as well as planting trees and other vegetation native to Ohio wetland habitats. Our statewide focus includes most impacted areas most impacted by harmful algal blooms and other water quality challenges, with initial projects including the development of additional treatment trains at Grand Lake St. Mary's and the creation of a wetland at Buckeye Lake along a tributary stream that receives stormwater runoff from adjacent agricultural fields before discharging into the lake. 
An additional project is a multi-component project to improve water quality by reducing nutrient levels at Harsha Lake. However, as this work proceeds forward, greater information is still needed to determine the effective placement of future wetlands, what kind of projects need to be developed once a site has been selected, and then once constructed, what are the best management practices to maintain wetlands and nutrient removal functions? So the specific questions relative to H2Ohio include, is the wetland construction and maintenance a cost-effective method for mitigating nutrient loads to water bodies in Ohio? In addition, how does this compare to the effects of agricultural BMPs, uh, reduction in emissions by wastewater treatment plants, and improvement of household sewage treatment systems? Therefore, measuring the success of implemented projects and developing a scientifically sound monitoring program is critical to inform future management decisions. So shortly after the list of restoration projects had been developed, I, along with the, some of the research staff at Old Woman Creek, was asked to help take a lead role in the development of a long-term monitoring program. And based on past experience of successful collaboration, I reached out to our research community to build this program. And these conversations led to a partnership with LEARN, the Lake Erie and Aquatic Research Network. This is a research consortium consisting of 20 institutions throughout Ohio who seek diverse and inclusive network whose purpose is to promote collaborative inter-institutional research, education, and networking among field stations, laboratories, and diverse researchers to address challenges and opportunities facing Lake Erie. Within this network, a group has developed based on the needs of this initiative. This includes the LEARN's Wetland and Aquatic Research Team. Depicted here are all of the fellow researchers that I've been working with over the last few months to develop the foundation of this monitoring program. You can see here that there are 11 different individuals from six different institutions. It includes the uh, LEARN president, Sylvia Newell from Wright State University, and also Lauren Kinsman Costello, his, who is the current research lead of this team. As we move forward, we are also bringing on new individuals to take on this research lead and program administration of the program. This, these individuals will be placed or housed at different institutions, including Kent State, Old Woman Creek, and Ohio State University within the Sea Grant program. So, this takes us to where we currently are for the watering program. Over the last few months, this team has developed the outline and foundation of the program and includes a program overview, the guiding principles, an outline of different protocols to be included in the program, an adaptive framework so that we, as we learn more information, the program can be developed or made more effective, and then a discussion of project-specific monitoring plans. The guiding principles uh, that will be discussed in this protocol uh, is that all of the information gained from this um, program will be used to inform management decisions on future wetland construction, restoration, and management of in nutrient inputs. And while the restoration effort will likely result in other fish and wildlife benefits, these aspects may not be fully captured in the protocols due to the focus of these guiding principles. Currently, this is a list of protocols that are being developed, uh, including all aspects of understanding wetland nutrient removal functions, from hydrology, soil, soil and sediment sampling, to groundwater and surface water sampling in the lab and quantitative analysis that surrounds analyzing those samples. A key characteristics that we're currently working on is one section in particular, which is the site mapping and characterization. As you have likely gathered, there's a wide variety of projects included in H2 Ohio, and to step in and provide a uh, monitoring program for each of those different sites and make them um, so that we can compare between projects or within projects, we need to make sure that we have a strong foundation in understanding what currently exists at those sites. So based on this information, each project will then have site monitoring plans based on the unique characteristics of the site that will allow us to do this comparison between projects. 
Additionally, the other components um, that are discussed in the protocols will evaluate performance. Within each of these different sections, data sets will be generated to evaluate such things as dissolved reactive phosphorus and turbidity within the water, water extractual phosphate and total phosphorus within the soil, and changes in flow, water level, and water residency times. Defining success will then ideally include quantifying the reduction of nutrients that lead to an overall reduction in harmful algal blooms over a 10-year period of time. Current conversations within the group is the determination of sample size and frequency. With a minimum of 26 projects under development in phase one, additional projects hopefully on the way, this team is currently thinking through a tiered sampling system that will allow information to be gathered from all sites while likely putting higher investment as subset of sites to gain as much information as possible on the variability of nutrient reduction responses. Sampling frequency will be informed by current knowledge of spatial and temporal distributions and may be adapted as we gain more information. This program will also rely on leveraging existing monitoring infrastructure by our partners and throughout the state. The last section of the monitoring program will also include guidelines, instructions for how to edit and adapt the monitoring plans and protocols as we gain more information going forward. By using the initial data to understand the variability of some of these metrics, we'll be able to learn as we go and work to become more effective on our sampling efforts. The overall, overall timeline for the first year of this program is depicted here, and I'll just walk through it closely with you. Right now, we are in the monitoring uh, plan development stage. It is about six months to write the, the draft program, or just less than six months to write the draft program before we will send it off to an advisory and research um, panel to review to provide a critical response to make sure we put, the, put together the best program possible. Once they have reviewed the protocol that we have put together, we will then assess those edits and have final confirmation of the program by February for the hope of starting field work this coming March. Also, you can see here is in September, we plan on holding a public webinar to discuss the progress that, we're made, uh, that we've made and discuss some of our initial findings and things that we are still currently working on. We hope that this annual public webinar will be able to continue each year of the monitoring program. Also, as I alluded to before with the adaptive framework, each year we will meet with uh, agency partners and collaborators to update the plan as needed. As I alluded to at the beginning of my presentation, there's a sincere desire to have by all involved to use this as a monitoring, this monitoring program as a platform in which researchers can leverage the program to gain greater understanding of how wetlands work. By answering additional questions not fully answered by our monitoring program, including assessment of changes in biodiversity and other habitat attributes. The program will also provide the opportunity to be a proving ground for new technologies out on the landscape. Our research varieties currently discussed include many of the questions I've already previously mentioned, but also include an understanding of trade-offs between wildlife versus ecosystem functions, how effective wetlands are at removing nutrients at a short and long-term intervals, what roles plant communities play in these processes, among many other questions. Lastly, I also want to close by stating that keeping stakeholders um, in the public informed is a major goal of the H2 Ohio program. The ODNR will share uh, the H2 Ohio wetland plans with legislators, local government entities, and stakeholders to promote transparency and awareness. The short-term educational products, similar to other ones that we have created uh, at Old Woman Creek, will include the development of a video documenting the on-the-ground data collection, infographics that translate the analysis of the work completed, and an annual public webinar highlighting results. With that, I'd like to open up to any questions that you may have, um, and I welcome you to, to answer any questions now. Jen? All right. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, Morgan, will you share your um, your screen again for us? <clears throat> All right. Okay. So, um, well, the first question is, um, are you able to make your slides available? Yeah, uh, I think we should. Well, the video will be uh, available uh, via the YouTube site. I think we'll have to find uh, an appropriate platform to put the actual presentation slides on, but um, we will work on putting those available, making those available to you. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put my um, email in the um, in the chat box and I'm so sorry I forgot to mention this ahead of time there is a Q&A section which is what um, teams calls their chat box um, I'll put my email address in there and so if people want to email me if they want the slides um, we can do it that way we can get it into a PDF or something that so it's easily um, emailed um, but if you have any other questions the Q&A is um, the place to do it um, so just one moment here. So um, one question, do you have um, any idea of, um, or can you say what some of the wetland sites are that are, um, that have been chosen or, or that are coming? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did not put in too much information. Let me, uh, hold on one second. I'm gonna bring back up, um, and I can actually bring up another presentation uh, to walk you through that. OK, hold on. I'm going to have to switch you off of Morgan and back to you, Janice. OK. So Janice, you are sharing. Are you sharing your screen? I have not, but I can now. OK. Uh, hold on one second. Too many buttons. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys should be able to see um, back to that map that I had up earlier. And so this is the the entirety of the list that's currently developed. There are quite a few more in develop uh, going forward. Uh, but currently of the 26, three of those include Three projects within the coastal uh, areas, including Cullen Park, Grassy Island, and the Maumee Bay State Park. Now, I will say that since my role uh, within the project is development of the monitoring program, I don't have enough as much personal information about the each individual projects. Uh, Eric Sass is a lead person developing uh, the list of projects and is most familiar with the individual projects, along with the managers uh, such as Christina Cookley and David Sherman, along with a whole suite of individuals with the agency that are looking over these individual projects. These projects here within the coastal area uh, have been primarily put together in partnership, but have been led up by Scudder Mackey at the Office of Coastal Management. Uh, and also include a few others here um, from the Ottawa National Wildlife Refuge, McGee Marsh, Turtle Creek area, Bowling Marsh, uh, Darby Refuge, and, and the Navarre Marsh uh, Wetland Restoration and Connections. Um, not sure how much detail uh, you guys want about all of these, but this is information that I can provide to all of you. I think it is also available on the H2 Ohio website, which uh, is h2periodohio.gov, uh, which includes a lot of information about individual projects, not only from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, but also from our collaborative agency partners and the work that they are doing. So those are the coastal projects, inland projects. Uh, again, there are quite a few of those, so I'm not going to get into the details of those. Um, but I can provide uh, this information directly to those who might email it to me and also find it on the website. OK, great. Um, 
Uh, another question is, um, which I, you might, I think you talked about this a little bit in the timeline, but um, when do you anticipate the first data collection efforts um, to begin that are using empirical data to assess nutrient reductions of these projects? Yeah, uh, first data collection. Well, some of that data collection is already ongoing. We're trying as much as possible to opportunistically collect some pre-samples, although trying to develop the program and get pre-samples at the same time is a bit, bit of a challenge, but there have already been soil sample collections and water sampling collections at some locations. Formal start of the program will begin in March once the program has been approved, um, but we anticipate having some general understanding before that so we can get our, our feet on the ground in March. Great, thank you. Um, is there uh, one place or multiple places that will be that will be doing the um, the like the assessment, the lab work? Yeah, the assessment is going to be from a wide variety of labs, so it'll include like the Heidelberg lab. Um, our lab will probably do a little bit at Old Woman Creek as well as um, Stone Lab. Justin Chapin will be uh, conducting water samples there along with soil sampling at a variety of the primarily the six institutions that I had mentioned earlier, <laughs> um, but it'll be spread out across those different institutions. All right, um, and we have another question. So has the recent economic downturn affected the current or future funding of these projects? Uh, yes, it has. So um, it is improving, um, but it has mostly put a hold in the thinking process to ensure that we have additional funding. Um, those the funding that we've received for this one it was within the two year biennium. We did also get money from um, OWDA, the Ohio Water De Development Agency, OWDA. Uh, we got an additional uh, million dollar funding to continue on um, for a total now with the H2O Ohio funds, a minimum of three years of funding. Um, but based on um, the information that I've gotten from our collaborators uh, and agency personnel, we do have a lot of hopefulness for continued funding past that. We know that internally and externally, this is a very um, important issue that we're, we're trying to overcome here. And everyone has, has agreed that we need scientific information to ensure that we're making the right move forward. OK, great. Um, Ah, there's another question here. Do you have funding opportunities for these projects? So other, I guess, outside funding, are, yep. they, do, are they seeking? Yeah, that is an excellent question. So uh, the research questions that I uh, discussed at the end of the presentation, we are already in the works of trying to think about where we can get additional funding. So um, some of the, the opportunities may be internal through some of the funding that Sea Grant coordinates through um, the Ohio Department of Higher Education. Uh, they already have uh, a lot of uh, HABRI associated research that goes on that they help um, facility along with other programming. So I've already been contacted for um, a number of different researchers that are hoping to use this as a platform to gain more information and, and seek out additional funding. All right, and then um, so far one last question is, can you just do a brief um, recap? I know we did um, when the monitoring is going to start in March, but can we do a brief recap of the timeline? Um, yeah, do we, and I can also just go ahead and bring that back up. You want to share it again? Um, okay. Yeah, I will share that again. Um, Okay, you should be able to see it now? Yep. Okay, so you can see here, um, the first part of this is the development of the monitoring program, and then with final approval of that program after the critical review in February, 
field sampling starting in March. And then we expect uh, that annually uh, it'll be similar to um, going forward that we'll have most of the field sampling starting in March going through seasonally uh, and possibly year-long samples occurring in uh, lower quantities but definitely high samples within specific seasons to give us the most information and then reporting out that information annually through the public webinar and then review of the program annually with our agency and collaborators over the winter months as possible. Okay. And um, will there be any future sites or any additional sites added in the future? Absolutely. Um, I can't, I don't know the whole listing with the total numbers. The last time I looked, there was um, uh, 30 to 40 different possible projects uh, for phase two. Not that all of those projects uh, will be funded. I have no idea how many of those projects will be funded, but there's at least that many being currently looked at as opportunities to move forward with. Okay, great. And I think that was our final question um, that we had listed here. I just put a, a final call out if people have any other remaining questions. Um, once again, thank you to um, the Friends of Olderman Creek uh, for helping us with brown bags year in and year out. Um, they help us with uh, funding for them and promoting them. Um, we're hoping this format worked well. Uh, we will we'll get feedback, I'm sure, afterwards. Um, so it's a little easier and we can just you know, publish the link and there won't be as much um, need for registering. So hopefully that will work um, for future. We will pick back up again um, with brown bags in April uh, as we normally do. Uh, and we hopefully will be able to provide them um, in this virtual format. And then once we're able to meet back in person, um, we, we are looking to have people visit the reserve again. Uh, if you want to visit the reserve, the trails are open um, sun up to sundown every day. And, um, you know, it's beautiful fall weather this weekend. If you can get a hike in, come out and visit. The leaves are starting to change. Um, our, we still have our animal friends that are getting ready, our squirrels, and everybody's going crazy over the acorns right now. So um, lots to see if you come out and visit. Uh, and uh, keep an eye on our playlist if you want to check out um, past uh, brown bags or future comings uh, of virtual programming. All right. And uh, Jen, I just wanted to say one last additional thing uh, is that I know there's a wide variety of people um, on this uh, webinar today, but if anybody has any additional questions, whether that just be general people from the public or researchers who have uh, additional questions or would like to collaborate or hear about first future research possibilities, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email and contact information is available at the HiodNR.gov website. Just search for the Old Woman Creek web page and all of, all of my contact information will show up there. So feel free to reach out to me if any of this information is useful to you or you have additional questions. All right, I just threw your email in the chat as well. All right, so thank you for joining us. Um, visit your local wetland if you can and uh, have a great Friday. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Bye.